know more about the developments and the activities taken for the last one year, we have none other than Lieutenant Governor R.K. Mathur with us. So welcome to DD News, sir. Can you tell us, sir, what was your feeling and how, what were the challenges from the beginning of uh, Ladakh Union Territory status and till now? And how did the Union Territory Administration has come out from those challenges? Uh, first, I must thank Doordarshan for giving me this opportunity of preaching all my Ladakhi brothers and sisters, as well as the other parts of the country and the world. First, I must say that the date of 5th August 2019 is historic. This is a new Union territory. There was no office of Lieutenant Governor. There was no Secretariat. We had a very skeleton staff. And to start these offices, was itself a challenge. The winter aggravated the matters where in the dark the general habit, the general practice has been that uh, these five months very little government work is done and therefore to get a government going during this period was a big challenge. During this last winter we were able to, I feel, give slightly better services to the people of Ladakh. These services include better power supply, better water supply. We brought in about over 400 metric tons of fresh vegetables, a rare commodity during winters, as well as other essential com commodities. We introduced helicopter services through Air Force to evacuate the passengers or the patients from different remote areas. We also moved a large number of passengers from Kargil particularly and also from Leh because they had no other, no other connectivity, particularly Kargil, but for the Indian Air Force Service. Insofar as road connectivity is concerned, I am happy to say that we tried to take steps to connect Zojila Pass, that is connection to Srinagar, as well as the road to Manali as early as possible. The border road organization came up very well and this year we were able to open the two passes almost one month earlier than the normal past trend. I am happy to say that this year compared to the previous years, the area under cultivation has gone up by almost 20%. The other interesting thing which we were able to achieve was greater care for the Pashmina goats, particularly in the Changthang region. I'm happy to inform that our latest survey has indicated that the, push, the, the population of Pashmina goat has increased by as much as 6% partly result of weather, partly result of efforts put in by administration in terms of giving them much better medical facilities than in the previous years. And in the current financial year, Government of India has made an allocation of almost 5,900 crore rupees. This is the sort of funding which has never come to this union territory. And I'm sure that this funding which ultimately would be non-lapsable in nature, would go a long way in improving particularly the infrastructure, the higher education, the income generating sectors of Ladakh. This uh, special package which is given to Ladakh region, which is, as you said, is an enormous and uh, unprecedented. How uh, UT Union Territory Administration is planning to spend this uh, for the concrete development of Ladakh region? The Honorable Home Minister had announced that uh, this package would amount to about rupees 50,000 crores. This is a phenomenal amount. And uh, I am sure that with this amount, which 
as I said earlier, would be non-lapsable in nature. The Union Territory Administration proposes to focus very substantially on infrastructure development, higher education development, and development in the field of economic activities. Let me give some examples. Uh, on the infrastructure side, we would talk in terms of the different tunnels. It may be Khardungla, it may be Changla, it may be Fotula, it may be Namkila, it may be uh, uh, several other mm. small uh, uh, passes which make our lives difficult, which makes many areas inaccessible, but with this I am sure that lives of the people would definitely improve. Administration uh, might have identified certain uh, priority sectors, including uh, like uh, you were saying, uh, infrastructure areas. The, the, are there any other uh, priority sectors like um, inf uh, power supply, schools, like this? Um, uh, let me talk of some other areas which I expect special development package to cover. Okay. One area, as you rightly said, would be the transmission lines. Today, every household in Ladakh aspires not just for a local grid in terms of solar power, it aspires for a proper grid connectivity with the northern grid. This is considering the large area of Ladakh a very expensive and a time-consuming proposition. However, as part of the special development package, a decision has been taken to strengthen the entire transmission network to reach as many homes as becomes possible in new union territory controlled Ladakh University has already come into existence and has become functional. So higher studies would form a very important part. The Modi scheme also you launched with a uh, very good intentions of uh, making Ladakh as an organic state by 2025. You are, uh, can you throw some light on that and how you are going to and how this is going to help uh, Ladakhi people? As we all know, the vision of Honorable Prime Minister is that Ladakh should be carbon neutral. We already had a conference on this subject with a variety of experts and their recommendations are already with us. Among the recommendations, it is also a decision that we would convert Ladakh into an organic state by 2025 through a scheme which has been called in honor of our Honorable Prime Minister as Modi itself. Modi stands for Mission Organic Development Initiative. This scheme shall firstly target on making our agriculture totally free from chemical fertilizers, chemical insecticides, chemical pesticides. And you are, okay, have been meeting for the last one year, uh, all the Pachayat uh, members and all. How you are going to support uh, as Union Territory Ladakh administration the grassroots level? administrations? Well, I, th I think Ladakh has become a huge administrative experiment <laughs> and a huge administrative challenge also. As I said earlier, setting up a LG office and a secretariat is something new. The second new thing is the empowering and substantial strengthening by law of the two Ladakh Autonomous Health Development Councils in Leh and Kargil through an amendment which was actually done in 2018, but which was again vetted and approved by the parliament of this country. The third administrative change which has taken place is elections at the panchayat level, both for the blocks mm -hmm. as well as the villages. And therefore, one can imagine that from the LG office to the gram panchayat, a whole new administrative structure has come into being in Ladakh. The challenges are tremendous. Mm. Who is to do what? How would you do it? These are the things which are exercising the minds of the people. 
the panchayat people come to me and say that, what am I supposed to do? How do I do uh, Manrega programs? How do I do 14th Finance Commission programs? How do I do electronic signatures? Mm -hmm. These are the challenges. Where is my office? Where is my money for even providing tea to the, my, to the visitors who come to meet me? Mm -hmm. This is a challenge right at the grassroots level and we are addressing it. A large number of BTC chairmen were sent out for training to National Institute of Rural Development in Hyderabad. They have come back somewhat richer. We have organized local trainings, for example, to teach them how to do electronic signature to be able to draw money. Now, this is something which takes time to come into being mm -hmm. and to work on the ground. The pupil are also not used to this new institution. They also have to learn and understand how the panchayats work. The next stage, the two councils have been in existence for quite some time in Ladakh. However, with their increased budget, the greater power which have been vested with them, they have to understand, they have to see how they work with UT administration. Uh, if we look at uh, uh, Ladakh was supposed to take off uh, in the month of March for the season, for be it tourism or be it otherwise also. But we were hit by COVID-19 and that was followed by Indochina uh, uh, tensions also, border tensions also. So how uh, the, uh, the major uh, tourism sector is uh, now hit and how Union Territory Administration is going to support the tourism and tourism dependence? Tourism was opened up in Ladakh in 1974. Over the years, it has grown to almost 600 crores economy. In some way or the other, almost 60 to 70 percent of the population of Ladakh is engaged with tourism, whether it is as a humble porter, whether it is a travel agency, whether it is a pony rider, whether it is a hotel owner, all of these people contribute and get work out of tourism industry. As you rightly said, this industry has been badly hit. Not only in Ladakh, but in the rest of the country, in the rest of the world. It is important for us to deal with it in two different ways. One, that a very substantive dependence on tourism has to be minimized by way of making alternative sources of income available. I have talked of the alternative sources of income mostly in the primary sector, that is whether it is Pashmina goat and Pashmina, whether it is uh, horticulture in terms of apples, apricots, other dry fruits, medicinal plants, aromatic plants. These are the things which in a crisis situation like this help the population to tide over the crisis. However, I still feel that tourism would continue and in fact grow to, to be an extremely important sector of the economy of Ladakh. We have a large budget of 347 crores in the current financial year for tourism. With this budget, what we are attempting is there are subsidies which were due to hotel owners, which were not given because of the uh, division of Jammu and Kashmir from Ladakh. We are trying to give those subsidies so that there is some money in the hands of hotel people. Under the Atmanirbhar scheme of the Honorable Prime Minister, mm -hmm. we are taking steps so that all hotels are registered as MSME units. With this registration, they become entitled to certain emergency loans, certain concessions, which I am sure would be helping them. We are also in the process of bringing out an incentive policy for the tourism sector, which in many ways uh, would be helping in terms of infrastructure, in terms of training of the pupil. Basically, the incentive policy would be aimed at making the tourism industry stronger to offer a better product, better tourism product than it had been offering. 
So, so far as the hotel industry and the administration is concerned, we are treating this difficult time as time to consolidate, to bring up our own strengths so that as and when the tourist sector opens up, we can come back stronger okay. and better. Okay. So if we look at uh, uh, to reach the development or progress to the villages, road connectivity is the priority. And you have several agencies here uh, like BRO and the local PWD. How you are coordinating with and how you are making best of uh, these two organizations and the, the national highways also? Well, as I mentioned earlier, under special development package, we have funds not only for the tunnels that I spoke of earlier, mm -hmm. but also for improving the actual road infrastructure. We are already getting funds under Government of India schemes, namely PMGSY for mm -hmm. the village roads, CRF for major roads. CRF, in fact, a major uh, project which has been sanctioned is uh, uh, a, a, a road between Kargil and Padam, which I hope would be an all-weather road. This is something on which work has already started. The bigger problem is that the roads which have already been constructed, almost 3,000 to 4,000 kilometer of roads are not blacktopped. This is something which we need to address. Similarly, a large number of village roads have been made under Manrega program, etc. Now, these have remained kacha, but they are extremely important for the villagers. Now, this is the category of roads which we hope under the special development package, we would be black topping. So it would imply that starting from national highways to important roads within the state and also the village roads, at all three levels, we would be trying to provide much better quality of road. We have the funds, we have the great asset of a disciplined, cultured manpower of Ladakh there is no reason why with money, opportunities, very disciplined and very valued uh, population here, there is absolutely no reason why Ladakh cannot grow. Basically, what we are looking for is a healthy, strong, literate Ladakh, which stands much richer than what it is today. So finally, on the first anniversary of Union Territory status to Ladakh, what do you want to say to the public here? Well, for the public, my message is very simple. Firstly, I really respect and appreciate the discipline, the culture, the accomplishments of the people of Ladakh. I respect the strive, the drive, to become better, to become richer, to become happier, to become more deeply entrenched, to be more uh, cognizant of their own culture. This is something which we would work together with the people of Ladakh to achieve. And this is our Lieutenant Governor R.K. Maturji and sharing his thoughts with uh, Ladakh people and with the nation.